What's up guys, it's WarDude. Today I'm going to show you my ideal storm build in Anthem. We're going to be covering the blast seal, the focus seal, the weapons, the components that you're going to be running, as well as the support seal. Now, if you're planning on running Grandmaster 2 or even 3, you'll quickly realize that it's not just about your power level, but about how your items work together in synergy. You can't just go into a GM2 stronghold with your best in slot because it has the highest power. You'll quickly realize that you're probably going to have a bad time. Ideally what you want to do is make sure that everything works together to benefit you so there's no downtime. So for my blast seal I use Hailstorm's Renewal. It's a primer that hurls chunks of ice at the enemies potentially freezing them in place. Its masterwork passive is defeating an enemy from above instantly restores 75% shield energy. As a storm, you'll notice that you tend to float more because you can. The storm's float ability is pretty much broken. Alright, let's move on to the focus seal. The focus seal I use is black ice. It's a detonator and it reads, upgraded glacial spear, combo effect, chain. Defeating an enemy freezes others nearby. Can you see how this is starting to work together a little bit between my blast seal and my focus seal? I prime them with my hailstorms renewal, freeze them, and then use my black ice to detonate, further freezing others in the area. When you get up to Grandmaster 2 and 3, it's not necessarily about killing them quick, it's about crowd control. If you can freeze most of them, it leaves you open to killing the others one by one a little bit easier. Alright, let's move on to the weapons that I use. For my main weapon, I use Rowner's Blaze. Rowner's Blaze is a, an assault rifle and it's basically an upgraded version of the Hammerhead. So it's the hardest hitter in assault class and its passive is it ignites the target while on a hit streak. So you have to hit them five times and then it sets them on fire. This is great for soft targets targets that don't have shields or once you break the shield then you start lighting them up with this it's perfect because it adds that passive debuff that damages them over time so you don't have to worry about them as much this is great for the minions with smaller health bars like the dominion shock trooper let's move on to my secondary weapon thunderbolt of yvenya it's a masterwork marksman rifle it's an upgraded version of the scout it's basic semi-automatic rifle. It has a 33% chance to deal large electric damage. Now what's so good about this is electric damage actually melts through shields. So if I can hit that 33% chance, it's just helping me take down some of the heavier guys. So between Rowner's Blaze and Thunderbolt of Yvenya, I have a nice even mix of shield destruction and soft target destruction. Alright, for my components, the first one I use is Mark of Wrath. Mark of Wrath increases gear damage by 50% and lowers gear recharge rate by negative 20%. While right bumper, or your focus seal, for me it's black ice, recharges, my left bumper, Hailstorm's Renewal, damage increases by 50% for 5 seconds. So using these two together is pretty OP for your seals. And you're going to start noticing that my components revolve a lot around my seal cooldown and my seal damage. And as a storm, I feel like, for me personally, my role is to help try and take down some of the heavier guys with shields. And you'll notice in the gameplay later on in the video that that's exactly what this build does. For my second component, I use Token of the Master. Token of the Master increases blast damage by 35%. And its passive is hitting an enemy with a right bumper, again black ice, increases your hailstorm renewals damage by 60% for 5 seconds. So here's another one that when one is on cooldown, or when one hits the enemies, it increases the damage of the other. For my third component, I use Token of the Pupil. Token of the Pupil increases the number of combo chains by 2, which is very good in and of itself but its passive is hitting an enemy with a hailstorm's renewal increases black ice's damage by 60 percent for five seconds so again another one that increases damage on hit 
Now, because I'm using a lot of ice seals, I felt it appropriate to use Amulet of Winter as my fourth component. Amulet of Winter increases ice damage by 5% and ice effects by 5%. So ice damage obviously is the amount of damage you do. Ice effects, from what I can tell, is the ability to freeze people. Fire effects would be the ability to set them on fire and acid effects, so on and so forth. You, you get it. Its passive is applying ice effects increases weapon damage by 40% for 20 seconds. Now this plays into my guns that I have equipped. I use ice to pretty much melt shields. Once the shields are down, then I start hitting them with my weapons. So I have a 20 second period that my weapon power is increased by 40% on top of the passives that my weapons already do. For my fifth component, I decided to go with a general component because I realized that I was really squishy. Now, don't get me wrong, storms are very, very useful, but they are glass cannons. You can get hit once, maybe twice with this build, and you're down. So your dodge comes into play a lot, and you're going to have to use dodge. But anyway, Vanguard's token is the fifth component that I use, and it increases the armor by 25%. A shield break increases damage resistance by 10% for 20 seconds. Now, like I've been saying earlier, all I do is break shields. So I have that constant 10% resistance bonus going if there's enough enemies to allow it. And for my final seal, I use Token of Daring. Token of Daring increases elemental damage by 35% and decreases physical damage by negative 35%. So this kind of goes into the ultimate category for the storm. Um, your elemental damage, you, as you know, for storm, you use lightning, fire, and ice. Uh, well, you just got a 35% damage increase um, as a sacrifice to your weapon damage. But with token of the pupil, you end up getting that 40% back. So it evens out, you know? Um, for the passive, a shield break increases seal damage by 20% for 20 seconds. So again, focusing around shield breaking and seal damage. Now, for my support seal, I have yet to find a masterwork or legendary version of it. Not one single one has dropped since I've hit level 30. And it's kind of annoying because Iron Jesus has definitely not been with me. But... For the sake of the video, I'll cover them anyway because they are important. Um, you can either use Quickening Field or Wind Wall depending on the build of your team. Me personally, I prefer Wind Wall because Wind Wall creates a wall of wind that blocks projectiles. In the higher levels, it's nice to have that one split second because they will break through very easily. But it's nice to have that one split second if you need it in a pinch to try and get one of your teammates up. Quickening Field is just as good, um, but for this build, I prefer Wind Wall. Alright, that's enough about builds. Let's get into the gameplay so I can show you what this build can really do. Alright, so we're going to go over all the points of this build, starting off with the Hailstorm Black Ice combo versus Shields. You're going to see in this little clip that it melts elite shields like it's nobody's business. Keep in mind all this was recorded on Grandmaster 2. Now I'm going to show you what this legendary focus seal can really do. Keep in mind I use Hailstorm's Renewal to freeze them at first and then hit them with the black ice after. You'll see just how far this chain can go. Right here I realized that this Elite is Frost, so my Hailstorm won't do anything to it. So I swapped my Thunderbolt of Yvenya, and the passive just melts away its shield. At this point it's just rinse and repeat. Use your Hailstorm to prime, Black Ice to detonate, and then finish them with Ralner's Blaze.
Here's yet another example of just how important crowd control is when you're playing Grandmaster 2. We end up getting ambushed by all these scorpions. And so I end up using, yet again, my Hailstorm Renewal and Black Ice to chain freeze all of them. And it was just enough to help my teammates be able to focus them down. Towards the end, you'll see I also use my ultimate, and you'll see just how much that component really helps, given that extra 35% elemental damage to your alt. It melts large groups very quickly. Alright, so you can melt some smaller enemies with your ult. Big deal. What happens if there's a group of elites that show up? What does your ult do to that? And for that, here's your answer. Alright, so as you can tell, this build really revolves around your Hailstorm and your Black Ice. So, to recap, use your Hailstorm and your Black Ice to chain enemies together for easy crowd control. Not only that, but you can use it to break shields. When you use those shield breaks, your component's passive will trigger and you'll end up gaining armor and damage output as a result. Don't forget to use the passives from your weapons to melt soft targets and to also melt shields if your abilities are on cooldown. Throw your wind wall up whenever you get into a pinch. It's quick to block at least one projectile. Maybe not from a boss, but you might have enough time to get somebody up. Use your dodge a lot, float, and fly around because if you get hit, you're going down. So that's pretty much it for this build. I'm going to leave you with the rest of this gameplay. We're just going to clean up a few of these enemies here, and I utilize pretty much everything that I was talking about in this build. Um, if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to drop a comment down below. Any feedback is appreciated, even if it's negative. You know, uh, I always strive to improve. Um, I also do want to apologize for being away for so long. Uh, some personal stuff has come up and I wasn't able to record and edit some videos together for you guys. So um, if you do enjoy this series, I would definitely love to put up some more Anthem gameplay. I'm absolutely in love with this game. Uh, you know, despite all its brokenness, um, I think it really does have some potential. And if you'd like to see other builds for other javelins, uh, let me know. Or throw me some suggestions of your builds. Uh, I'd love to see them.